The Battle of Buena Vista, also known as the Battle of Angostura, saw the United States Army use artillery to repulse the much larger Mexican army in the Mexican-American War. Buena Vista, a village in the state of Coahuila, is seven miles south of Saltillo, in northern Mexico. Background After the Battle of Monterrey and the end of the armistice, Major General Zachary Taylor's Army of Occupation with General William J. Worth's 1,000 men advanced onto undefended Saltillo on November 16, despite orders to halt any movement further south. Considering it strategic to cover the approaches to Monterrey and Paris de la Fuente, Taylor then directed General John E. Wool from Moan Clover to Paris, the objective being control of that agricultural area. Wool's force moved to Agua Nueva, south of Saltillo, on December 21, to counter rumors of impending attack. In mid-August 1846 Antonio López de Santarana returned from exile and quickly assumed command of the Mexican army, abandoning any pretense of reconciling with the U.S. He reached San Luis Potosi on October 8 with a force of 25,000 men. In early January, Santarana acquired a letter from Gen. Winfield Scott ordering Worth's troops to join General David E. Twigzer and General John A. Quitman's divisions in Veracruz, prompting Santa Ana to make attack plans for Saltillo. General Jose de Arias cavalry would simultaneously retake Ciudad Victoria and cut off Monterrey from Matamoros, Tamaulipas. Santa Ana's army departed San Luis Potosi on January 27 with 21,553 men, and reached Incarnation, south of Saltillo, with 15,142 men on February. 20 Taylor moved 4,650 of his men to Agua Nueva on February 14, but on February 20, Marge. Then, McCulloch's Texas Rangers encountered Santa Ana's force at Incarnation, prompting Taylor's withdrawal to Angostura, a mile and a quarter south of Hacienda San Juan de la Buena Vista. Gen. Wool was charged with selecting the field of battle and making such dispositions of the troops on the arrival of the enemy as he deemed necessary. Wool thought the site excellent for defense since the road passed through a narrow valley here, which was crossed at right angles by several ravines east of the road and arroyos were to the west. Wool placed Captain John M. Washington's battery across the road, supported by the 1st Illinois under Carl John J. Harden and 2nd Kentucky under Carl William R. McKee. Continuing to the left was the 2nd Illinois under Carl William H. Bissell, General Joseph Lane's Indiana Brigade, the Kentucky and Arkansas horsemen, with two squadrons of dragoons and a company of Texans in reserve. Santa Ana advanced to Carneiro Pass below Agua Nueva on February 21 and on February 22 demanded a surrender, to which Taylor's aide, William Wallace Smith Bliss, eloquently replied, I beg leave to say that I decline acceding to your request. Santa Ana's forces consisted of Major General Manuel Maria Lombardini's division and Major General Francisco Pacheco's division in the center with 14 pieces of artillery. Carl Santiago Blanco's regiment of engineers and three 16-pounders on the left, and Major General Pedro de Rampudie, light infantry with General Julian Uvira strong cavalry brigade on the right with two batteries. In reserve was Major General Jose Maria Ortega's infantry division and Brigadier General Francisco Mejia's brigade. Battle. Santa Ana began the attack with a feint by Mejia to the American right, but his main thrust was to the American left. Wool moved three companies of Kentucky cavalry under Col. Marshall and four rifle companies of the Arkansas Regiment under Col. John S. Ronan four companies of his ears under Major Willis A. Gorman to strengthen his left. Marshals and Ampudia's men skirmished by 3.30 p.m. but darkness brought an end to the fighting. 
After dark, Taylor, escorted by the Mississippi Rifles, Carl, Jefferson Davis, and Charles A. May's Dragoons, checked on the Saltillo garrison, but returned by 9 a.m. on the morning of February 23 during the night. Brigadier General Manuel Michel Torreina moved five eight-pounders above the American left, intending to flank them along the high ground the next morning at daylight. Ampudia's brigade started the assault, supported by Lombardini's and Pacheco's divisions, while Morass demonstrated against the American right. The second Indiana faced a force of 7,000 Mexicans, prompting Wall to send the second Illinois and Captain Thomas W. Sherman's battery in support. The Hoosiers, after taking 90 casualties, broke and fled, forcing the 2D Illinois in a slow fighting withdrawal, and Marshall's men to flee northward to the Buena Vista Hacienda. Uvira's cavalry was able to turn the American left flank and head for Buena Vista. Davis's Mississippians were ordered to shield Buena Vista along with the Arkansas and Kentucky Cavalry, the 3D Indiana, and Captain Enoch Steen's Dragoons. The American left was thus strengthened, the center still held and the right was still solid. At the Hacienda, Archibald Yell's men held, although he was killed, and Steen's Dragoons were able to split Uvira's column forcing the advance portion past the Hacienda and under fire from Sherman's battery, while the dragoons threw the rest into confusion. Davis's men then sent the Mexicans fleeing, although Davis was wounded in the heel. Major John Munro organized the defense of the Hacienda proper, using the 2D Indiana from Uvira's attacks. While the Mississippians and the 3D Indiana were organized into a large V, forced Uvira's about 2,000 survivors into a ravine. A young Mexican lieutenant, Jose Maria Montoya, tricked Taylor into a ceasefire, allowing the trapped Mexicans enough time to escape. Brigadier Jose Vicente Minin appeared before Saltillo but retreated to the southwest. Santa Ana renewed an attack on the main U.S. Position led by Gen. Francisco Perez with artillery support. They were met at 5 p.m. by fire from O'Brien's and Thomas Guns and two Illinois and the Kentucky Regiment under Col. John J. Harden in which he was killed. An artillery battery under Braxton Bragg then arrived with orders to maintain the position at all costs. Taylor rode over to Cap. Bragg, and after a brief conversation in which Bragg replied he was using single canister shot, Taylor ordered, double shot your guns and give em hell, Bragg. Later this order, although misquoted as, give them a little more grape, Captain Bragg, would be used as a campaign slogan which carried Taylor into the White House. Perez's attack was repulsed and the fighting ended as heavy rain fell over the field. Aftermath on February 25, Santa Ana's Council of War at Agua Nueva advised retreat. Taylor led his army back to Nueva. He did not pursue Santa Ana any further south. Buena Vista County, Iowa, in 1859, was named in honor of the battle, as was Buena Vista Township, in Michigan's Saginaw County, and the cities of Buena Vista, Virginia, Buena Vista, Oregon, Buena Vista, New Jersey, and Buena Vista, Alabama, in northern Monroe County. Among the dead was Henry Clay, Jr., second son of American statesman Henry Clay, a vociferous opponent of the Mexican War. His death was the subject of prints by Courier and Ives, and Neil and Pate. Also killed were Archibald Yell, former governor of Arkansas, and John J. Harden of Illinois, a Whig political rival of Abraham Lincoln. Order of Battle A. Mexican Army undated returns Acts 18530 of Liberating Army of the North Gen. D.I.V. A. Lopez de Santa Ana 39 Staff Acting Gen. Manuel Michel Torreina. 10 ENGRs. Gen. Ignacio de Mora y Villamil. 61 Medical Corps INSP. Pedro van der Linden. 584 Artillery Gen. Antonio Corona 1 Art. BTRY 3 to 24 Pounds Guns Captain. F. Marino 1 Art. 
BTR Y3 to 16 pounds guns and one howitzer 7, one art. BTR Y5 to 12 pounds guns de Leon, one art. BTR Y5 to 8 pounds guns captain. I. Balata. Commissary and baggage train P. Wrangell. 324 Regiment of ENGRs, Col. Santiago Blanco. 466 Regiment of Hussars LT. Col. Manuel Andrade. Infantry. Gen. Br. Manuel M. Lombardini. Light Brigade Gen. Br. Pedro de Rampudier Regiments. 4839 Second Vanguard Division Gen. Br. Francisco Pacheco. First Brigade Gen. Jose Garcia Cond. Second Brigade Gen. Francisco Perez Reg. Fifth Brigade Col. Jose Lopez Uragar. Third Rear Guard Division Acting Gen. Jose Maria Ortega. Fourth Brigade Gen. Br. Luis Guzman, First and Second Mexico, Cuerretero, and Aguascalientes Activos BNS. Sixth Brigade Gen. Andres Tez Guadalajara OBN. Joined later. 1007th Brigade Gen. Anastasio Paroda. Cavalry. Gen. Julian Uvera Horse Artillery. 1,418 to 1 Stone Brigade Gen, Jose V. Minin, 4th Cavalry, Jalisco Lances, Cazadores, Oaxaca and Puebla Activos Reg, 1,094 2nd Brigade Gen, Julian Uvera, 5th and 9th Cavalry, Tulancing Ocoriceris, Moralia Activos Reg, 808 3rd Brigade Acting Gen, Anastasio Torrejon, 3rd, 7th and 8th Cavalry, Mexico Light, Granaduato Activos Reg, 394th Brigade Gen, Manuel Andrade, Michoacan Activos, Presidialis, Detached, Cavalry Brigade Gen, Jose Aria, Infantry Brigade Gen, Br. Sriaco Vasquez, B. United States Army 4759 United States Army of Occupation Marge, Gen. Zachary Taylor Washington Battery CPT, John M. Washington, 1st Illinois Volunteers Regiment Col. John J. Harden, 2nd Illinois Volunteers Regiment Col. William Henry Bissell, 2nd Kentucky Volunteer Regiment Col. William R. McKee, Arkansas Volunteer Regiment Col. Archibald Yell. Kentucky Regiment Colonel Humphrey Marshall. Indiana Brigade Brig. Gen. Joseph Lane. 2nd Indiana Volunteer Regiment Col. Bowles. 3rd Indiana Volunteer Regiment Col. James H. Lane. 1st Mississippi Rifleman Regiment Col. Jefferson Davis. May Squadron, 2nd Dragoons Col. Charles A. May. Steen's Squadron, 1st Dragoons Captain. Enoch Steen. Reserves. Battery CPT. Thomas W. Sherman. Battery CPT. Braxton Bragg. 